gift of encouragement. The spiritual gifts are found in Romans chapter 12, verses 4 through 8. Now, Sue and I have said, since we started coming to this class a couple of years ago, every Sunday we drive home and we talk about things that we learned in this class, the way it applies, that I, that I, you know, I used to teach a Sunday school class for a number of years prior to coming to this church, and I constantly learn a ton of stuff. I don't ever believe I've been in a class with somebody like Dan. Fred has some great teachers, but never anybody, never anybody like Dan. Dan is saying basically Romans chapter 12, verses 4 through 8, include all the spiritual gifts. A lot of studies you look at will have two or three other lists of things that are gifts, quote unquote. Dan is saying that's primarily, primarily the ministries uh, for those gifts. Those aren't the gifts. So the seven that this, these verses here are really where your spiritual gifts come from. When you make a decision to accept Jesus Christ and he becomes a part of you, you instantly get that spiritual gift at that time. Uh, you may get more than one. You may get more than one. But that's when you actually receive that your spiritual gift when that Holy Spirit comes into you. Okay, Romans 12, verses 4 through 8. Just as each, each of us has one body with many members, and these members do not have all have the same function, so in Christ, we who are many form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. We have different gifts according to the grace given us. If a man's gift is prophesying, let him use it in proportion to his faith. If it's serving, let him serve. If it's teaching, let him teach. If it's encouraging, let him encourage. If it's contributing to the needs of others, let him give generously. If it's leadership, let him govern diligently. If it's showing mercy, let him do it cheerfully. Okay, those are, those are the seven gifts. What are the gifts? Okay, here's the list. I know when some of these past weeks have gone by, I'm so quick. I can only write so fast. And the truth is, after I get home, I can't always read when I'm writing. So, here's a list of the seven gifts as shown in Romans 12, verses 4 through 8. The first gift is prophecy. The definition of prophecy is not what I thought it was. It's telling something in the future. Dan's told us the, the true definition, the correct definition of prophecy is proclaiming God's truths. That is Dan's primary gift, spiritual gift. Now, if you'd asked me, and I think most people in this class, you might have said Dan's primary spiritual gift is what? Teaching. Because dog on, it doesn't get much better than what we get every Sunday. But no, Dan says his primary gift is prophecy. Proclaiming God's truths, the motivation to reveal unrighteous motives or actions by presenting God's truths. Okay. Next one is serving to bring relief. The motivation to demonstrate love by meeting practical needs. The motivation to bring relief, the motivation to demonstrate love by meeting practical needs. Okay, teaching, clarifying truth. The motivation to search out, validate, and reveal truth defined in God's word. Again, if I was going to define teaching, I might have put it a little bit differently, which is probably why the classes I taught for a lot of years weren't as effective as it could. Then Dan wrote a book, Teachers Teach. It talks exactly about the proper way to teach. Every teacher that, that you know ought to get it's a skinny little people back book. Well, yeah, if you still write it, read it that quickly. But it's excellent, an excellent guide as to how to pro properly teach. Encouragement to lift up, the motivation to stimulate the faith of others. And what we're going to talk about today, the spiritual gift of giving, means to share. The motivation to entrust personal assets to others for their spiritual welfare and for the furtherance of their ministry. Notice how that differs from the serving. Serving is the motivation to demonstrate love by meeting practical needs. But that's different now. There's a lot of, way, there's a lot of ways you can meet practical needs other than what is, what is giving says. Entrust personal assets to others for their spiritual welfare and the furtherance of their ministry. It's really different. Administration, to accomplish the Lord, the motivation to coordinate the activities of others for the achievement of common ministry goals. If you, if you would think of one person that we've been studying very recently that has the gift of administration, what, who comes to mind? Who? Abraham. Abraham, sure. Who else? Nehemiah. I heard somebody say? Nehemiah. Nehemiah. Building that wall. You know, orchestrate everybody through their stuff. Abraham did, a, Abraham did a ton of stuff. He also had the gift of administration. Okay. Noah. Noah. 
boy, oh boy, talk about gift of administration. You know, telling the giraffes to go over here and the woodchucks to go over there. I mean, that can't, you know, it's get stepped on or something. <laughs> that's, that's tough. All right. Uh, the last one is mercy, to show compassion. The motivation to discern, identify with, and comfort those who are in distress. Only seven of them. Every single person that's accepted Jesus Christ as their personal Savior has at least one of those gifts right now. Now, notice no, there's nothing about sharing the plan of salvation in those gifts. Uh, why is that? Because the Great Commission tells us that's a responsibility we all have. We all have. Now you say, what about Billy Graham? Just as an example. You know, it's hard to think of a better expositor than Billy Graham. That is his ministry. We're going to look at a verse of minutes. It talks about how you use your spiritual gift. Dan says his primary spiritual gift is prophecy. His ministry, which is the place he uses his spiritual gift, is teaching. And then the location for that is right here in the open class. Uh, there's been a lot of people that have come to Dan and uh, offered him other opportunities uh, in many different facets. And uh, that, that there's no question Dan could do. But he's saying, no, you know, my gift is prophecy. The ministry I have, which can change, is teaching. And the location is in the open class. God can change that. God can have, say, hey, I want you to go. Uh, you know, use that, use that gift of prophecy in such and such a way, in such and such a place. But that's not the case, and right? You know, yeah, obviously there's no plans of leaving anything from this. Okay. So along with your gift, you need to discover your ministry, how you can use your gift, and your location where you can use your gift. After we're done studying the spiritual gifts, Dan is going to, Dan is going to take the next step, and he's going to show you how to identify where your ministry should be. Okay. Review. Uh, it, Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians 12, 1, now about spiritual gifts, brothers, I do not want you to be ignorant. He wants you to know. We see it time and time again. You need to know your spiritual gifts. He doesn't want, we don't want to be ignorant. Each one should use whatever gift he has received to serve others faithfully, administering God's grace in its various forms, not for ourselves, but for others. The spiritual gift you have is not for your edification. It's to use it for other people, regardless of what the gift is. It's easy to say, you know, to use that gift and make yourself look good or, or benefit yourself by, the, by that gift. That's, that would be a misuse. The gift is for others. And remember, we're going to see specifically who. Uh, the purpose of the spiritual gifts, we see in, uh, in Psalm 68, 18. This is why it says, when he ascended on high, he led captives in his troop train, and he gave gifts to men. Gave gifts to men, Psalm 68, 18. Following that up with Ephesians chapter 4, verse 8 through 13. It was he who gave some to be apostles, some to be prophets, some to be evangelists, some to be pastors and teachers, to prepare God's people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up. So that the body of Christ may be built up. Prepare God's people for works of service until all we all reach unity in the faith knowledge and measure of the fullness of Christ. The spiritual gift is given to you to help build the body. Who's the body? Other Christians. The church. Other, other. Primarily, the primary source of your spiritual gift should be toward other Christians. And you say, well, what about, what about those that aren't Christians? Well, fine. I mean, obviously, we want to help them and we want to support and use, uh, use whatever we can to help help a not Christian as well, to get them closer to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. But the primary function of your spiritual gift, what does it say? To prepare God's people, God's people, for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up. That's the primary reason we get spiritual gifts.